Shalom, shalom. All right, first and foremost, want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who rule well and teach well, and who have learned this truth from through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and salutations unto all the Akim. You brothers preaching this word in truth and in sincerity across the four corners of the earth. And shalom to the hopeful elect, you sincere believers scattered wherever you may be. So uh, the title of this one, Lord willing, will be, Who is Esau? Who is Esau? Question mark. Because um, right now <laughs> you have a, a, a lot of false prophets showing their, their true colors, man. Our Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is um, revealing heavy in these times. And like the scriptures say, these men, or say, uh, let them alone. Uh, they be blind leaders of the blind, loosely paraphrasing. Because like we just had one body in Dallas just went into how <laughs> uh, completely butchered the scripture. The breakdown of it, uh, Genesis 25, and Lord willing, we can get into it saying that it was two doctrines within their minds, talking about the womb was the mind, just complete madness. And Lord knows if these men were paid off or they have some type of hidden agenda, whatever the case may be, they're not speaking the truth. All right, they're not led by the Rechak Wadash. And at the end of the day, all right, it's a, it's a necessary evil, so to speak. These things are going to come to pass because it's prophecy. All right, and before I grab this, let me grab this. Uh, you know, as brothers is constantly going in right now, whether it be uh, them, whether it be the Sakari, um, having the false breakdown of the, of the Zechariah, IUIC just um, just went into uh, uh, a video. The Apostle Dahar had hit on it. They're now saying that you're supposed to uh, leave your unbelieving wife after so much time hey man it's a lot of false doctrine spreading and this is why you know what i'm saying and lord willing uh we be those men but you have the true prophets they how about y'all shy rebuking correcting um these heirs and and pointing these men out to stay away from them but this is matthew 7 and um no it's like matthew 24 and 11 and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And at the end of the day, the Lord is setting up these prophets to be stumble blocks unto those um, that he doesn't want. All right. Now, we do believe that uh, there's there's particular men and followers of these groups of the elect that eventually they're going to come up out of that. All right. In the last hour. But God knows. And and. Speaking of, of that humbly, because we don't know if we're of that number. We just pray and hope we're of that number. And we try our best to, to walk with fear. All right. And uh, uh, preach the word of truth in sincerity. You know what I'm saying? Um, and through, you know what I'm saying? The things we have learned from our elders and apostles, the, the correct truth. You know what I'm saying? The 100% truth. Not some watered down uh, or, or just making up things on the fly, you know? But so like I'm rambling, this is Ezekiel, all right, 14 to 9. And this is why we can't get too flustered over these men. We just rebuke, correct, you know what I'm saying? Hey, brother, you're going off. And this is why. Give the correct breakdown and Lord willing, they repent. If not, so be it. All right, that was their lot to be a false prophet. Because again, everybody has their role in this movie. But this is Ezekiel 14 and 9. It says, and if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Like the scriptures say, that the deceiver and the deceived are his. It says, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Because what? Like uh, uh, a brother had mentioned in the comments on, on one of the videos I watched. He's messing with Israel's salvation. He's messing with the lives of others. 
teaching incorrectly, leading our people astray. You know what I'm saying? Ezekiel 14 and 10, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. So both, again, they be blind leaders of the blind. And what? They're both going to fall into a ditch. All right, but uh, so let's, let's get into this uh, Genesis 25. All right, because who is Esau Edom? And we know Esau Edom is the so-called white man. And if you don't see it, the Lord just has the blinders on you still. You know, because it's evident. Who is the main protagonist in the Lord's movie? Jacob. Who is the main antagonist in the Lord's movie? Esau. You know, and it's not a, a, a black and white thing, so to speak, because we know there's there's so-called looking, or I should say a so-called white man. Or they may look like a so-called white man, but some of them be Jake. You know, so this is more so of a, of a spiritual thing. All right. But for the majority, <laughs> they're white. And, you know, and they're really not even white. That was a, a construct that they came about in Virginia, like the Elder, Elder Makama um, goes into a lot. You know what I'm saying? But uh, they're really red. As the scriptures state, they're red. They're translucent. They're, they're, you know what I'm saying? On a whole, they're a reddish pink. They're not white. White is something you see like on a car. You know, that, that pure white or like glue. There's a difference. But so like you. This is Genesis 25. And I'll start at uh, 21. It says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together in her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to acquire of the Lord. So they were fighting. They were, they were, you know what I'm saying? They were struggling together in the actual womb of Rebecca. You know, not. That was bug, man. Talking about doctrines within the mind. No, this is actual two nations, right? Two kids, two children, fraternal twins within the womb of Rebecca struggling. And this is why it says, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So, so between these two kids, nations were going to come up from out of them both. All right. It says, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Right. Two separate spirits on them both. It says, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And that's Jake. Jake as a whole, we got more swagger than them. We overpowered them. We're basically on the, uh, on high over them see right now uh right now we're not because of the curses all right because esau edom's in the rulership right now but eventually what and the elder shall serve the younger all right and uh who came out first it's gonna go into it but his name was esau all right and they're gonna serve us in the kingdom of heaven you know as servants as slaves it says in revelation um it says in Revelation, so like I, I believe it's uh, 13, maybe 13 and 9. Yep, Revelation 13 and 9. And if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Who brought us into captivity? Who brought us over here via the cargo slave, slave ships? The so-called white man. All right, so he that uh, uh, led us into captivity... They're the ones that are going to go into captivity as well. And that's going to happen when? Hey, under, or uh, when Yahweh Shai returns and sets up the kingdom of heaven. It says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. And the saints are the Israelites. You know, according to uh, Psalms 148 and 14. It says, he also exalteth the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Let's go back to Genesis 25. You know. Uh, and to speak on it again, you know, the uh, we we're separated. We we're separated in the womb. It's all spiritual. And that one people shall be stronger than the other people. We're the superior ones. All right, and Esau Edom is the inferior. He's a, he's a base man, and he's going to be brought down again. 
All right, this is Genesis 25 and 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. So he came out red. It says, and they called his name Esau. All right. It says, and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Symbolic how, uh, uh, you know, we're going to bring him down. You know, Jacob bringing down his, his power, right? His rule. And what? And his name was called Jacob. And notice uh, they didn't give the description of Jacob because what? He was a, a melanated uh, child. You know what I'm saying? It says, and Isaac was three score years old when uh, she bared him. So Isaac was 60 years old when the twins were born. Uh, and two, let me let me read this because this also goes. It's all spiritual, man. If you don't see it, you're not meant you're not meant to see it. Genesis 25 and 27. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And who do you see for the majority that likes to live in a forest, you know, has hella guns because that was one of his blessings as it goes into. And uh, I believe that's uh, 27. OK. You know, and this is all. Just uh, basic scriptures, man. Yep. Uh, Genesis 27 and 40, it's just straight to the point. It says, and by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck okay so all right there by the sword he's gonna live and what it said that he was a what a cunning hunter a cunning hunter a skillful hunter Esau Edom the so-called white man loves to hunt love their guns they hang up their uh their kills on the wall you know just like in that movie get out um you know, and, and wicked, it said that his soul is not upright in him. But that's one of their traits. That's one of their characteristics. There's some hunters. And what a man of the field. And outdoorsmen, they love the outdoors. They love going hiking. They love, you know what I'm saying, uh, um, going on their trips to these uh, uh, mountains and, and forests and grab their tents and the kids. You know, you know how Esau do. <laughs> It says what, though? And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. So he was kicking. He likes chilling. You know, Jacob was a plain man. He prefers to stay at the crib. You know, chill. And also that word plain also goes into. Uh, all right. Sound wholesome, ordinary, quite sort of person out the mix for the most part. He's not doing the most like Esau Edom. Also, it goes into a complete morally innocent having integrity. Because why? We actually have a, a, a conscience, man. Esau, Edom don't have that. You know, I said, uh, even when um, he doeth good, he doeth it unwillingly. Because by nature, he's the wicked. The Lord set him up to be the wicked. You can read Malachi 1 and 4. But just... uh. Like we read, it said what? Um, it's a lock here. Where was I going? Oh, right there. It said, and is uh, going back into that verse 26, Genesis 25 and 26. And after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. All right, Jacob. Symbolic to Jacob. Bringing down that rule. All right, bringing down uh, Esau Edom's rule. All right, starting with. You know what I'm saying? The mouth of the prophets, but ultimately, hey, Yahweh, when Yahweh Shai returns and knocking him off that uh off his horse, so to speak, off off his power. Knocking him out from power. Cause what? The earth is given into the hands of the wicked, like it tells you in Job 9 and 24. But this is second Ezra 6 and 9. It says, or well, starting at 8. It says, and he said unto me, from Isaac unto, I mean, Salakia, from Abraham unto Isaac, 
When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. And this is the point for Esau is the end of the world. And we know that we're at the end of the world, given all the prophecies that are coming to pass. OK. And you see now who's in charge of everything around you, all these major corporations, your media, your businesses, uh, who's over the money. Esau eat him. It says what? For Esau is the end of the world. So he has to be, you know, what I'm saying the so-called white man because we're at the end of the world. We're in them latter days and he's in power. All right. But what? And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we're up next. The so-called I mean, the so-called the Israelites are up next. The so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans for the majority for the uh, you know, what I'm saying. And also you're scattered. OK, so, hey, man, when Yahweh Shai returns, he's calling he's, he's coming to return to a society ran by. The Edomites. This is uh, Isaiah. And we'll close on this Isaiah 63 and one. It says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? And Basra is a capital. It was a capital city. All right. For Edom. It says this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And like I always like to quote, he's not coming to meet thee as a man. He's coming in his full glory, his full power, his full potential, so to speak. It says I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save because what he, he comes in the volume of the book. He is the, the, he is the word. It says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Yahweh Shai, he deliver. He saves, man. So this is speaking of Yahweh Shai. With them dyed garments. Speaking of all the, the, you know what I'm saying, the killings that he's coming to do. It says, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, in thy, gar in thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Because he's going to stomp everything under him. With Esau eat him. <laughs> uh, uh, being, you know what I'm saying, on the end of that stick. You know, target practice. Isaiah 63 and 3. I have trodden the winepress alone and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger. Like we just mentioned. Trample under them under his feet. It says, and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is mine, and the and the year of re, my redeemed is come. Like it says in verse 4, Isaiah 63 and 4, For the time has come for me to avenge my people, who? The Israelites, and ultimately the elect. Because that's who's going to be delivered in these times. It says to ransom them from their oppressors. Who oppresses us? Esau, Edom. Esau, Edom is our oppressors. Who had us in, in hardcore slavery and bondage? Who's oppressing us to this day? Who do we got to pay taxes to? The so-called white man. All right, and, and that day of vengeance is coming soon. It's in his heart. And the year of his redeemed is come. He's going to redeem us, man. He is the one that's going to uh, 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 buy us back. He's the one coming to save. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So with that, a Lord willing, this was edifying and exhorting. And Lord willing, all came together through the Spirit. Again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rechakwadash. Double honors again unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, Wa, Kwam Yasharat.